Now after a few more videos and a bit more time, I've made some changes to my Euro 2024 fantasy draft. Ahead of the friendlies, this is where I'm at. Right then, we'll kick things off with goalkeepers and defenders, and I don't think this is a whole lot different to my previous one. However, a couple things have emerged since then. I think Sales is going to be the starting goalkeeper for Belgium at 4 million. I think it absolutely makes sense to get him in your team at that price. Yeah, I really like him as an option. Not wholly sure how good Belgium are actually going to be defensively. But with both of their assets in my team being just 4 million, the minimum price, I don't really think you can expect too much from them anyway. So I'm very happy to have both him and Valtfass in my team. Valtfass, like I said, I think Belgium will concede some goals, but having watched him a couple of times in person in the championship this season, he's definitely pretty decent going forward. So he's got an outside chance of making a crazy run through midfield and defence or potentially getting on the end of a set piece. Mittelstadt. 4 million for a starting German left back. Great value. Why not go for him? DeMarco, picking him particularly with the Albania fixture in mind. He had a really good attacking season for his club this season. I believe he got five goals and five assists in the league. 10 attacking returns for a fullback is pretty good. For Bruggen in goal, I'm a little bit unsure as to who my goalkeeper is going to be. I must say, I think I prefer Lunin as a 4.5 million goalkeeper, but both Lunin and Sales are in the same group, which means every time they play, they're going to play on the same day. So I have no option to interchange my keeper. So with that in mind, I think it makes sense to go for Verbruggen. And then I got a couple of bites of the cherry, if you like, for goalkeepers. And then finally, Virgil van Dijk. Early, well, later, late on last year, Koeman confirmed that Van Dijk is actually the penalty taker now for the Netherlands. So, 6 million defender, I mean, he's pretty much the most nailed player in the tournament, right? Virgil van Dijk, one of the best defenders in the world. He's definitely going to start for the Netherlands on penalties. When you think of how they're going to line up, they've got Ake, Van Dijk, De Ligt and Van de Ven like, on their bench. That's a really solid defence and I definitely think they have the ability to keep clean sheets. Just got to keep the fact they've got match day. Match day two, they've got France, so... Just got to keep that in mind. On to the midfield then. I've got Gundogan, who's in as my captain because he plays first. So Bozlai, who he is on absolutely every set piece for Hungary. He's definitely, in my mind, their talisman. He's going to play 90 minutes. I think he's got a good chance of netting some goals this tournament, either from the penalty spot, free kicks, corners he get assists from. And of course, he's got a decent shot from outside the box where we get extra points for goals from outside the box. So I really like him as an option. Similar sort of vibe really to Rodri, who probably has ball recoveries over Sir Bosley as well. I think he's really good for ball recoveries. Six to seven sort of ball recoveries per game in the European qualifiers. That's obviously potentially worth a couple of points per game in this game. I've also heard he's potentially on penalties for Spain, so that's really nice. A chance of scoring in any game from that. We all know how good he's been from an attacking perspective for Man City this season as well. Pretty sure he picked up 13 to 15 attacking returns in the Premier League this season. And some of them are from outside the box, right? And similar to what I said for Sir Bosley, extra points for goals from outside the box. I think he's a nice option. Xhaka, same kind of applies to him. Not on penalties for Switzerland, but he is only 6 million, right? He's really, really good for ball recoveries. In fact, I've got a little feature on him here. Absolutely exceptional for ball recoveries, I should probably say. Seven ball recoveries per game in qualifying. He should be on some of the set pieces, although probably shares them a little bit with Shakiri. Just absolutely nailed on for Switzerland. I'm pretty sure he is the national team captain. Been obviously unreal for Leverkusen as they've gone undefeated this season domestically. And just a gut feeling in my mind, I've said this in previous videos, I just think he's going to have a really good tournament. Bruno Fernandes, I don't think I need to say too much more about him as my fifth midfielder, right? He's going to take penalties when Ronaldo isn't on the pitch. I do suspect he'll be on quite a lot of the set pieces. We just know how good he is, right? Creatively and goal scoring. He's going to be nailed on. He's going to play 90 minutes every game. Really like him as an option. I just wanted to speak before we move on about Gundogan. At 7 million, Florian Wirtz is one of the most popular midfielders in the game, and probably rightly so, right? He's had an absolutely fantastic season for Leverkusen. But I think if you're looking to pick a German midfielder, Gundogan is the one to go for. Nailed on to start for Germany. He's their designated penalty taker. I think he's likely to play as kind of the number 10 in behind the forward. It's likely to be Kai Havertz. And we all know that Kai Havertz isn't an out-and-out centre forward. He's more of a false nine. I think both he and Gundogan could interchange in that position. Gundogan's proven as like that false nine. 
played there for Man City a couple of seasons ago and finished, I believe, as their top scorer for the season when they won the title. Should also be pretty decent for ball recoveries, and Germany have got a really nice group as the home nation. So what more can you want? Up front, again, I've, I've had these guys in pretty much every single one of my videos, I think, but I just can't get away from a front three of Lukaku, Kane and Mbappe. I think they're the three best forwards in the game. Ronaldo's, you know, he could be in there as well, but I just think with the price difference, whole million between him and Lukaku, it makes sense to go for Lukaku. I also think Lukaku's probably going to play more minutes as well. I do feel like Ronaldo, you know, Portugal could get through that group quite quickly and easily. He could be rotated in that final game. He's just, he's getting on, right? Yes, he's incredibly, like an incredible athlete, but I do think he's not necessarily going to play 90 minutes every game, whereas Lukaku, he probably will. And I expect him to start all three games of the group stages. On penalties for Belgium, in exceptional form during qualifying. I think he had something like 14 goals during European qualifying. Just absolutely exceptional. Kane and Mbappe, I mean, Harry Kane's probably the best centre forward in world football right now, playing for an England team heavily back to win the tournament, right? Not saying that biasly, I think. Know, if you're on the English betting markets, at least, they're the favourites. And then Mbappe, who's probably the best player in the world, right? I, I don't think you can escape definitely going for Kane and Mbappe. Maybe that third striker spot. I've seen a few people with Kai Havertz, a few people with Ronaldo. But for me, meet in the middle in terms of price. I think Lukaku is the man. And just finally, going into match day one, this is how I'm going to line up all of my bench and, and start an 11 to account for basically when players play, right? So I've got Lukaku, Kane, Mbappe, Gundogan, Sabozlai, Rodri, Xhaka, Mittelstadt, DeMarco, Van Dijk and Verbruggen. Starting for me with Sales, Fass, Bruno Fernandes and João Cancelo. Didn't even mention Cancelo, did I? I really like him in this game. I think Portugal, like we said, have got a really, really strong group. Yeah, back him to keep clean sheets in that group. And Jao Cancelo, we all know how good he is going forwards, right? So, yeah, I mean, expect some attacking returns and hopefully some clean sheets as well. I really like him as an option. And hopefully, yeah, hopefully I don't actually need to bring him in because the rest of my team have scored plenty of points. But I think I probably will. And with him playing on the 18th, likewise Bruno, they have to wait until the end of the match day to come in. Just one final thing before I sign off. I've not done a great job of plugging this so far, I'll admit. But if you want to join the Golden Goal Mini League, the code is just there on your screen. And I'll also leave a link to it in the description. All right, and that's the end of the video. Just thought I'd make one final update video on my draft before the friendlies we've got coming up. Pretty settled on this team now. I think ultimately any changes I make to it will now will probably be down to injuries or changes in the starting lineups, etc., depending on how we get on in the friendlies. So all eyes on those friendlies. If you enjoyed the video, please leave me a like rating. You can subscribe to the Golden Gold channel, which should be just there on your screen. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll catch you in my next video.